Vengeance Weapon Battery is a new fortification that came out with the new release of Apocalypse. And it's a $50 kit, you get two batteries. But no, I really didn't feel like spending that much money. And I definitely didn't want the ones that came in the kit because they're far too Imperial. So I've gone ahead and built my own. Here it is, one Orky Vengeance Weapon Battery. Let's see if I can get some better video here. See, actually see the white. So this is mainly foam core. There we go. The only structure is foam core, so it's the turret. Uh, this is a half inch plastic tube. This is magnetized on so it spins freely. Uh, the tube doesn't move though, I wanted that glued in place. And then, of course, it's completely orcified, that plate's bolted down, uh, the usual kind of triangle spikes that I put on all my orc stuff. Lots and lots of bolts everywhere. And it's actually a pretty darn easy project to do. Uh, the size was kind of a guess, because there's one picture on the GW site about, that has a corn berserker next between two of these things, so I kind of built it all on that size. And so this is what I'm going to be building. Of course, you can have two of them for one fortification. Uh, there's a base price and there's an upgrade uh, for the battle cannon. Um, and then you can have two of them per for, for, for a single fortification. Uh, so not only does it give you an AV-10 automated fire battle cannon that can kind of maybe thin out some things or support a flank, um, but then you can hide behind it, put your objectives here, put your lavas behind here so they can't be so easily picked out. Give you a nice piece of cover in addition to that. Just how big is this guy? Make it out. I have to make it out. There's make it out. Make it out I need to be. So that's how big this guy is. There's Mr. Make it out. So it's a little bit taller than the Mega Knob. Have an idea of how big around it is. So anyway, uh, this is what I'm going to be building. I'm going to be going to complete how-to on how I built this thing because I said I need two of them. You can take two of them. So this is my prototype, and the second one's going to be uh, done completely in a how-to video. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Uh, what you're going to need, of course, is some foam core. what I'm using, just a cheap piece from Office Depot. Uh, of course you're going to need knife, tape, glue, super glue to hold on to the plastic. Um, and some various plastic pieces. This is a half inch uh, tube from Evergreen Plastics. Uh, just basic styrene. And I've got some one quarter by 020 strips, some 040 by one quarter strips, this is actually a hex because I don't like rivets. I prefer bolt heads, so these are all hex heads instead of rivets, but if you want rivets, you can do that too. Um, and then for this part right here, I used 1 8 inch rod. And then also some cheap plastic uh, if you want to. This is some diamond, uh, diamond tread plate here. This corded cor cardboard is just corded cardboard. Uh, these particular pieces came out of an Asus motherboard box. And these pieces here are all just uh, cut off the foam, spare foam core pieces. Uh, I just cut the foam off the back of them and just used the cardboard to make all of the diags. So that's what you're going to be needing here. In fact, this is the cardboard right here. This is the corrugated cardboard that came out of the Asus motherboard box. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and get started on the tutorial. Okay, step one is with the foam core to cut out six uh, two and a quarter inch squares. Uh, it can be this size was uh, generated uh, mostly by looking at the picture of the Vengeance weapon battery next to the corn berserker. Cut these squares out. There 
interest in not using my hand bone square here. we need to build the Vengeance Weapon Battery. So the next step is to cut them at an angle. So they're two and a quarter on a side and the first one I built with the top being an inch and a half. So what we're going to do to get that inch and a half on the top is we're going to measure it to half which is one and an eight and then on each from that half mark we're going to go three quarter inch in which gives us our inch and a half. And then go ahead and cut out the sides. thing is I want to tell you is don't throw these pieces away keep them separate in a pile they will have a use later so there is what each side is going to look like um, so we just need to repeat this five more times six sides. Uh, now the problem is you can't glue these things together like this because uh, the edges will get in the way. So what we need to do is we need to angle these edges. There's too much weight. I'm going to angle the, the sides and the bottom bottom so it'll sit flat and then the sides so that they can sit together and angle. And again we have to repeat that for all six sides. And for this you don't want a 45 degree angle, probably closer to a 30 degree angle. Um, so that's probably a little bit too much right there. And try and keep your cut right up against the edge of the paper. Exact. You can just fill the gap with whatever glue you're using. So 
so now they will actually fit together uh, nice and smoothly. So once again we have to repeat that for every side. form the basic shape of the news button battery. What the heck? It's so much bigger than the other ones. Looks like I screwed up. So I need to recut a couple pieces because these were only two inches. Okay, now that I have six correctly sized pieces of foam core here, now we're going to build the basic shape of the Vengeance weapon battery. And we do it quite simply. I'm going to take these six pieces. We're just going to line up the edges. And tape them. tape here it should come off fairly easily. Too much ripping. I'm gonna spin everything around. Yeah it's not too bad. Don't get it where you want it to go. up the way you like. So we're good to go there. So what we're going to do is take my glue. I'm using tacky glue. You notice I took the camera off the desk so it doesn't shake while I'm working on it anymore. Sorry about that. I'm just going to fill the gaps with the glue. the way we want it. I'm actually going to tape it down so it stays in place exactly where I want it. great. There. So everything's now set in place. It's not a perfect hexagon, but then it's orcs. It's not supposed to be a perfect hexagon. And now the, we're just going to let this sit and dry. Probably going to let this and dry overnight before I finish it up. And remember, don't throw these parts away. I'm going to be using all 12 of them in the next step. So I'm going to call this good for part one and let this dry.